Hi there, first grade. So I am here to bring to you your new chapter book. I don't think this one will get us all the way to the end of the school year, but it'll get us close. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than how you're used to hearing chapter books because I love this book and I read it to my students every year. Um, it reminds me a lot of um, the movie Toy Story about toys coming alive, but it's in my classroom at school and I didn't want to buy another copy. And the library didn't have a copy. And so I had to check it out on Sora, which is what um, our librarian in virtual school teaches us to do. And so you're going to get to actually see the pages while I read because this is the only way that I can share it with you. So hopefully it's not too weird. If it gets too distracting or too awkward, um, I will just buy the book from Amazon again. <laughs> but let's try it this way and see what happens. So this is called The Toys Go Out. Being the adventures of a knowledgeable stingray, a toughy little buffalo, and someone called Plastic. At least this way you're going to get to see the pictures, which is really helpful. Toys Go Out by Emily Jenkins. Chapter 1, in the backpack, where it's very dark. The backpack is dark and smells like a wet bathing suit. Waking up inside, Lumpy feels cramped and grunt. I wish I had been asked, he moans. If I had been asked, I would have said I wasn't going. Shh, says Stingray, though she doesn't like the dark backpack any more than Lumpy. It's not so bad if you don't complain. We weren't told about this trip, snorts Lumpy. We were just packed in the night. Why don't you shut your buffalo mouth, snaps Stingray. Your buffalo mouth is far too whiny. There's a small nip on the end of her tail, and Stingray curls it away from Lumpy's big square buffalo teeth. Plastic usually hums when she's feeling nervous. Notice that Plastic is a capital P. That's her name. Plastic usually hums when she's feeling nervous. She trills to see if it will make the inside of a backpack seem any nicer. Don't you know the words to that song, asks Lumpy? There are no words. It's a hum, answers Plastic. No one says anything for a while after that. Does anyone know where we're going in here, wonders Lumpy? Plastic does not. Stingray doesn't either. My stomach is uncomfortable, grumps the buffalo. I think I'm going to be sick. Boom. It feels like the backpack is going down some stairs, or maybe up some stairs, or maybe up something worse than stairs. Stingray tries to think calming thoughts. She pictures the high bed with the fluffy pillows where she usually sleeps. She pictures the little girl with her blue barrette who scratches where the ears would be if Stingray had ears, but none of these thoughts make her feel calm. Oh, I hope we're not going to the vet, Stingray says finally. Where's the vet? asks Lumpy. The vet is a big human dressed in a white coat who puts animals in a contraption made from rubber bands in order to see what is wrong with them, answers Stingray who sometimes says she knows things when she doesn't. Then he pokes them over and over with needles the size of carrots and makes them drink nasty tasting medicine and bumps them in the bumpity washing machine to fix whatever's broken. If anyone needs to go to the vet, it's the one-eared sheep, says Plastic, remembering the oldest of the little girl's toys. And sheep's not even here. No, we can't be going to the vet. We aren't broken. Speak for yourself, snorts Lumpy, who feels even sicker than before at the thought of the bumpity washing machine. Whoosh, whoosh. The backpack begins to swing. Back and forth, back and forth. Or maybe round and round? Oh, I hope we're not going to the zoo, moans Stingray. So if you haven't figured it out yet, these are toys, and the toys are talking. So this is all written from the perspective of the toys who are now in the little girl's backpack and they're not sure where they're going and they're not happy. They'll put us in cages with no one to talk to, each one in a separate cage, and we'll have to whoosh back and forth all day and do tricks on giant swings with people throwing quarters at our faces and teasing. I don't think we're big enough for the zoo, Plastic says hopefully. I'm pretty sure they're only interested in very large animals over there. I'm large, says Lumpy. She means really, really very large, says Stingray. At the zoo, they have stingrays the size of choo-choo trains and plastics the size of swimming pools. Zoo buffaloes would never fit in a backpack. They eat backpacks for lunch, those buffaloes. Is that true, asked Lumpy, but nobody answers him. Plunk, the backpack is thrown onto the ground. 
or maybe into a trash can or onto a garbage truck. We might be going to the dump, cries Stingray. We'll be tossed in a pile of old green beans and sour milk cartons because the little girl doesn't love us anymore and it will be icy cold all the time and full of garbage eating sharks and it will smell like throw up. I don't think so, soothes Plastic. I'll be forced to sleep on a slimy bit of youth paper baggy instead of on the big high bed with the fluffy pillows, continues Stingray. There's a noise outside the backpack. Not a big noise, but a rumbly one. Did you hear that, asked Stingray? I think it is the x-ray machine. The Fed is going to x-ray us one by one and look into our insides with an enormous magnifying glass and then poke us with a giant carrot. I'm sure it's not an x-ray, says Plastic calmly, although she isn't sure at all. An x-ray would be squeakier. Then I think it is a lion, cries Stingray. A lion at the zoo who does not want to be on display with any small creatures like you and me. A lion who doesn't like sharing her swing set and wants all the quarters for herself. She is roaring because she hasn't had any lunch yet and her favorite food is stingrays. A lion would be fiercer, says Plastic, a bit uncertainly. It would sound hungrier, I bet. Maybe it's a giant buffalo, suggests Lumpy. Maybe it's a dump truck, squeals Stingray, a big orange dump truck, tipping out piles of rotten groceries on top of us and trapping us with the garbage-eating sharks and the throw-up smell. Wouldn't a dump truck be louder, asks Plastic, though she's starting to think Stingray might have a point. I'm sure it's not a dump truck. The backpack thumps down again with a bang. I would like to be warned, moans Lumpy. Sudden bumps make everything worse than it already is. The girl doesn't love us, and she's trying to get rid of us, cries Stingray in a panic. So they're talking about the little girl, um, who's their owner. They just call her little girl in this story. The backpack opens. The rumbling air noise gets louder, and the light is very bright, so bright that Stingray, Plastic, and Lumpy have to squinch up their eyes and take deep breaths before they can see where they are. A pair of warm arms takes them all out of the dark, wet bathing suit smell together. The three toys look around. There are small chairs, a sunny window, a circle of fidgety faces. It's not the vet. It is not the zoo. It is not the dump, they are pretty sure. But where is it? The rumbling noise surges up. A grown-up asks everyone to please be quiet now, and then comes a familiar voice. These are my best friends, says the little girl, who owns the backpack and sleeps in the high bed with the fluffy pillows. My best friends in the world. That's why I brought them to show and tell. Welcome, says the teacher. Sticky, unfamiliar fingers pat Lumpy's head and Stingray's plush tail. Plastic is held up for all to admire. We are here to be shown and told, she, she whispers to Stingray and Lumpy, feeling quite bouncy as she looks around at the schoolroom, not to be thrown away or put under the x-ray machine. The teacher says Lumpy looks a lot like a real buffalo. Lumpy wonders what the teacher means by real, but he is too happy to worry much about it. We're special, whispers Stingray. We're her best friends. I knew it would be something nice, says Plastic. Funny, but the ride home is not so uncomfortable. The smell is still there, but the backpack seems rather cozy. Plastic has herself a nap. Stingray isn't worried about vets and zoos and garbage dumps anymore. She curls herself into a ball by Lumpy's buffalo stomach. The little girl loves us, she tells him. I knew it all along, really. I just didn't want to say. Lumpy licks Stingray's head once and settles down to wait. When he knows where he is going, traveling isn't so bad. And right now, he is going home. So that's just a little introduction to some of the toys that we will meet in this story. So before I read the next chapter, which isn't going to be till tomorrow, I want you to think about what we know. We know that there's a buffalo named Lumpy, not Lumpy, but Lumpy. There is a stuffed stingray, and there is something named plastic. So Lumpy is kind of the grumpy buffalo. Um, he doesn't ever like anything to change. Stingray tends to get really worked up about things and she panics about everything. And she also makes up a lot of things that nobody really believes. And plastic is generally pretty happy, but we don't know what plastic is yet. So I wanna see if you can make some guesses. All right, I will see you back tomorrow for another, ver another chapter of The Toys Go Out. <laughs>